I've made quite a few videos about topology over the years and those videos always seem to get the same sorts of comments. Why is this necessary? What is good topology? Is it necessary to always use quads or can I use triangles or ingons in my topology? So I thought today we would just talk about some of this stuff and try and clear up a little bit of the confusion. So first of all, what is topology? Well, topology basically describes the way that the actual mesh itself on a 3D object is put together. So if you have a shape, a shape can be made up of any topology. You don't know what the topology of an object looks like until you look at the wireframe. So we can have two objects that look identical, but if you look at the way they're actually put together, they're completely different. So with topology, we obviously have uh, vertices, which are points in space. They're connected by edges. If you connect three of those together, you can have a face called a tri. Four of them are a quad, and any more than four is an engon. And depending on which way you put all these faces together depends on the topology of the model. So what makes the model on the left good topology compared to the other one? Well, first of all, on a visual point of view, you can actually understand the topology of the model on the left better than you can the one on the right. The one on the left has nice edge flow. You can actually select rings of edges, which makes it much easier to model. You can't do that on the model on the right because it has no uh, edge loops. The model on the left has much fewer vertices than the one on the right, which means it uses less memory and less storage. The one on the left has nice straight edges, so you can just select around parts and delete them and you get a nice clean edge. You cannot do that on the model on the right. The model on the right might have shading issues. Uh, there's all sorts of reasons why you want to have nice topology. Okay, so let's talk about quads versus tries and engons and which ones you should use. So every modern render engine in the world and pretty much all of the old ones use triangles. They all love triangles. It doesn't matter if it's a path tracer, a ray tracer or a raster engine. They all at the back end render out with triangles. So why do they love triangles so much? Well, first of all, the triangle is the simplest uh, geometric shape that you can describe in points. If you have one point, it's nothing. You can't render anything. Two points is just an edge which shows up as nothing. With three points, that's a face. So from a memory point of view, it requires a lot less storage to make a face. Secondly, depending on the render engine, you can make something called a triangle strip, which basically means you just need to index the position of the first triangle. Then every triangle that you add onto that, you only need to store one extra point because each triangle that's connected obviously shares two points with the next triangle. So from a, a memory point of view, that's much more efficient as well and much faster to render. Another reason why they prefer triangles is because of the normals. If you don't know what normals are, I did actually make a video called Change Your Understanding of Normals, but the normals are basically the direction that a face points. Render engines always assume that all of the faces in the scene are perfectly flat, which means the normals on that face are all pointing in the same direction. The problem is if you have a quad or an engon, you can actually have a bent face, which means even though it's been shaded like everything is facing the same direction, you can actually have a face that's pointing in multiple different directions. You cannot bend a triangle. You have an anchor point and then you have two other points, which means it's always a 2D shape. A triangle is always 2D. You cannot bend it into a 3D shape. No matter how you move the verts around, you're just going to have a flat triangle in a different orientation. So if render engines love triangles so much, why are you being told to model everything in quads? Well, first of all, it's very easy to take a quad mesh or any other mesh, but especially quads and turn it into triangles. All you have to do is cut it diagonally down the middle. That's what happens every time you send a file to, for instance, I use Blender. So every time I send it to the Cycles render engine, before it renders everything out, it takes all of the mesh and it just cuts it all up into triangles. So that's not a problem at all. Secondly, have you ever tried to model something with triangles? Like realistically, pretty much every shape that you'll encounter in real life, right? I've got a can of Pepsi here, parallel lines, okay? Parallel lines, top and the bottom and on the sides, even though it's a cylinder. On, parallel lines. You can pick anything up, the door behind me, parallel lines, the desk. Quads are made of parallel lines. They always have at least one set of parallel lines. Triangles, they never have parallel lines. So if you try to model something with triangles, it's gonna be a nightmare. So from a practical point of view, we use quads. 
Secondly, if you're using quads, it's very easy to manage subdivisions, especially if you're using an algorithm like a subdivision surface modifier, which is basically gonna take every face and split it into four. A quad has four sides, so you literally just split it with cross, and it's very easy to manage how that's gonna be applied. If you have a shape that has triangles or engons and you apply a subdivision surface modifier, it usually turns out a bit of a mess. Thirdly, if you're working with quads, as we mentioned earlier on with the, the topology at the start, you have edge floor. You can select loops of quads and you can go up and down, left and right. If you're unwrapping something, it's very easy to unwrap if everything's in quads. If it's in engons or if it's in triangles, you don't have that luxury. But that doesn't mean that you have to always use quads. I use triangles and engons all of the time when I'm modeling things. Now, if I was working in a studio where I was handing off the files to other people, or I was really trying to optimize things for games, I would probably have a lot fewer engons and triangles in my work, but I would still use them because trust me, professionals end up using them all of the time. But yeah, they still make it into my work. It's handy sometimes if you're working on a box and you want it to have kind of rounded off edges, you just select the edges and you bevel them. And obviously at the top and the bottom, you're gonna end up with an engon. Now, as long as the engon or the triangle is on a flat surface, it shouldn't cause any problems. It usually won't get in the way of most of the edge loops and things, and you can always redirect edge loops around them if you need to. And also, if it's on a flat surface, most of the time, it's not gonna make any problems with the shading. If it does cause any problems, that's when I'll tend to go in and actually fix them. But I'm not necessarily thinking too hard about quad topology when I model things. It's more a case of, well, let's see how things turn out. And if there are problems down the line, as long as you know how to fix them, then you should be fine. That's why I've made so many videos in the past about topology. It's not necessarily about using this stuff right from the start every time you model, but you do need to know this stuff because if you encounter problems that are caused by not using quads, it's nice to be able to know how to actually fix them without having to start again. But as I said, professionals use uh, bad topology and use non-quad topology really quite often, more than you might expect. If you download a game model from the internet, it's usually, as I said earlier on, it's usually already in tries. But if you run a try to quad command in something like Blender, you can usually find that there's still some places where it will have to leave an end on, or usually I think it leaves triangles. Now, sometimes that's just because the algorithm they've used to triangulize is different to the one that Blender's using to reverse it. But sometimes that's because there was an engon or a triangle there in the original mesh or somewhere similar, there was a triangle or some other thing that would be bad topology. Because as long as it's not causing any problems, most professionals have no problem leaving them in. It's the same with just like ugly or non-functional topology. There's a really good screenshot. Uh, it's very rare we get to say this stuff, but this is a topology of uh, Elastigirl from The Incredibles. And most people who are character modelers or whatever, if they're not in the industry, they would look at that and say, oh, well, that's ugly topology or it's, it's non-functional topology because it doesn't have very good edge flow around the mouth. It doesn't have loops around the mouth and places where you would normally expect it. But this is Pixar at the end of the day. And we've all seen The Incredibles and most people have seen it. And I didn't notice any problems with the characters' mouths. Did you? So what does good topology actually look like? Well, to me, good topology mostly uses quads, especially on curved surfaces. It has a fairly even distribution of quads, meaning most of the quads are around the same size. Obviously, there will be areas where you might need more density, but for the most part, it should look fairly evenly spread out, which will make your UV unwraps better. And also means if you need to add something like a subdivision surface modifier, you're not gonna end up with one area of the mesh that's extremely dense. It will have uh, supporting edges on deformable parts and will deform nicely. So for instance, if it's a character's face, as I mentioned earlier, it will have some loops around areas that open like the mouth, or if you have uh, knuckles or elbows, there'll be supporting loops around those to make sure that they bend in a nice way. And it won't have any shading issues. If there are any shading issues, usually that's something you're gonna have to fix. Though frankly, you can sometimes get away with a couple of shading problems and there's some little bad topology, 
I'm working on my first course right now, which should come out in the next week. And part of that course, I'm giving away a massive pack of assets, the sort of things that you really get sick of making in interiors, like light switches. I'm going to be honest, there's some kind of little shading glitches in there, but you're never going to see these in a render because light switches and sockets for electricals and things are always so small in the scene. For the size that it's intended to be viewed at, it's never going to cause a problem. If you'd like to get your hands on those assets, by the way, without having to buy the course, you can always get them from my Patreon. It's available to all subscription levels. So I think that just about covers everything. The main takeaway that I want you to have from this video is that you shouldn't overthink topology. Topology is something that you mainly have to think about when it's actually going to cause a problem in terms of how your meshes are shaded or how they're going to be unwrapped or how they're going to deform when they're animated. It isn't something necessarily that you always have to worry about. Just because you're making a model, it's mean that everything has to be in quads. Just use your head about this stuff and you'll start to fail it out over a while and realize when it's important and when it's not. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Make sure you hit the like and subscription button if you haven't already. And I'll catch you in a few days with another video.